So Illmatic comes out, and uh, like I said, it doesn't go multi-platinum in the beginning, but it cements him as, okay, this is, this is the next dude. So he starts working on his second album, which you're not on. Yeah. And why is that? You get, essentially, <laughs> the guy you that just sound like KRS one Why is that? Why is that? <laughs> yo, nah, I don't, yo, I don't know. Nah, nah. I, I, you know, it was just time to get big, man. It was just time for him to get big. You know, I was limited to New York. Yo, New York. Nah, you sound. Yo, and all of that. And it's like, yo, dogs, I done seen some whole other shit out over here and over there and over there. And it's time to get big. You know, and I was... You know, a lot of that, man, I just wanted to, I, I had a, a different outlook. It's just, you know, creatively, we just, you know, kind of went different ways. You know what I'm saying? That's that's all it was, I think. Right, well, yeah. Ultimately, ultimately. I mean, he was working with Dr. Dre at that point. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Who's large professor now when I have Dr. Dre? You well, know what I'm saying? I'll be honest, I didn't like that album. Oh, and uh, I, I, I didn't like that album. I actually didn't like him and Dre together. On, on that, I mean, I like phone yeah. tap later on, but yeah, that, that right tap, there, yeah, the, the yeah. songs like Nas is coming. The Nas is coming. Nah, especially because I knew the original sample, and I was like, they could have did better on that interpolation. But nah, it, it's we good. You know what I'm saying? We good. Like he, you know, the work is in, and that's the thing that I love about it. The work is in, whatever it is, and that and that's more so the thing that I I'll be saying about Nas is that I don't care about the beats. You know what I'm saying? Him. And when I speak to him, like, I, I tell him about, you know what I'm saying, like, yo, I like this line or I, whatever, you know what I'm saying? He don't give, you know, so, but he always, you know what I'm saying? A lot of times what's wrong, you know, what people have gripes with is, are the beats. It's okay. never like, yo, he says some bullshit or something. It's like, yeah. I didn't like that beat. Well, you know, a lot of people get on me on this. Oh, yeah, that's, yeah. Yeah. And what, I, what I've said is, Nas is the worst beat picker of all time after Illmatic in terms of artists of his caliber. Because I'm such a big fan and also such a fan of Illmatic, I felt that his beat picking disappointed me a lot. And a lot of people get mad at me. And I've spoken and I've said this on I, camera. Absolutely. No, I've seen I've, I've, yeah. I've seen. I've seen. I've said it with Ron Browse. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but I felt that overall, when you look at Nas's career, as one of the top rappers in the game, I felt that he was one of the worst beat pickers overall. Now, he has his moments, but when you look at his bodies of work, I feel he doesn't, he doesn't always pick the best beats in terms of his entire albums. Mm -hmm. Now, you know, Ether was dope. The whole first album was dope. Um, songs on Stillmatic were dope. Uh, he has dope songs, but overall, I feel that his beat picking isn't matched up to the level of artist he is, where you compare him to like a Jay-Z or someone like that. Mm -hmm. as, as one of his producers, because you also did Last Real, Last you Real. Were Alive. Yeah. Like, how do you feel when, when people say stuff like this? Um, I look at it two ways because I'm, a, I'm, I'm an artist as well. So picking beats is also moody and what you're going through in your life. So, um, if you feel in a certain way in life, you're going to gravitate to certain type of beats that other people not on that wave. They like, we on this. Why are you on that? But you don't know what that man is going through in his life that's making him feel like that. I think his moms were sick at one point or something like that. So, you don't know if he was going through something or, you know, that made him pick certain beats. I, I, I've said it was Salam Remy. Well, one of the things that that's sort of been brought up uh, in a lot of recent interviews with me in terms of what I've debated with people is that I personally feel that Nas being at the caliber of artist that he is, I feel that he's one of the worst beat pickers of all time. Not, not in terms of every beat that he picks is not good, I just feel like when he puts out his bodies of work and when you look at other artists of his caliber, like the Jay-Z's, the Kanye's, the Drake's, and so forth, I feel that beat-wise, his music is not as consistent, consistently strong as some of these other artists. Now, you being one of his main producers, what do you say to something like that? Number one, he doesn't give a fuck what you think. Number one. Or you or anybody. So that's number one. Okay. Number two, 
you know, once again, I, I pointed out the other day that Hip Hop Is Dead, I only had one song on there really, or half a song. I did Where Y'all At that wasn't on the album, the end wasn't on the album. I helped him finish Where Are They Now, whatever it was, but that album had three Kanye records, a Dr. Dre record, whatever it was. The reality is that, you know, I thought about the other day, he's like, he's had Neptune's records. It's just, that's not his lane, that's not his zone. Where he writes to and what he actually feels inspired to may not be what everybody else may be on at the moment. So Nas writes and picks his albums based on the content of lyrics that he's on. I said it was absolutely. Double, so with it's his only main right. producer, it's you know right. what I mean? I gotta it's say, with right. large professor. Now I think I think um, what it is with him is that he uh, sees song because uh, surprisingly, one song that I did not like in the beginning was one Mike. Hmm. I was like, nah, dogs, you in a battle right now, man. You coming in some vulnerable shit, man. He's like, yo, chill, Lars, professor. You, you don't know everything, man. I'm like, all right, man, do all your right. thing. And then that shit, you know what I'm saying, went crazy with it. Because I was just, you know, that's always been my thing is that I've been like, nah, real hip-hop, real hip-hop, real. And, you know, it's different, you know, sections of it now. It's like, yo, here's the one with the shine. You know, now it's like nice things. You know, you want to throw the silk shirt on with the, mm -hmm. you know, and things like that. So you can't. Play no you know, grunge shit with that. So I I, I get it. I, I understood it. But what's fitting for him coming to, because of the impact that he made initially is that rugged shit. You know what I'm saying? Because mm -hmm. he just seemed like he gets so mystic with that rugged, ill. Like, you got to love it. Like, he just, you know, when the beat is ill, it just seemed like it, it make him get iller. Well, you talked about his beat selection. You said uh, the thing about it is like it ain't even about a beat. It's about a song, a composition. Yeah, no doubt. And that's why people say, yeah, we don't really love the beat or whatever. They love a song. So that's the whole thing about it. It's like, yo, at the end of the day, it ain't about yeah. oh the rhyme or the beat. Yeah, it's about the whole composition. The exactly. You know, yeah, right there. That's the thing right there. And that's why he's still going strong to this day because he can make a song, he can make composition. Exactly. Whole composition. Exactly. And that's, and that's the thing. But sometimes the beat is so bad that it's like, damn, I, I don't I don't even want, you know, that type of shit. So, you know, but I don't, I don't think there's too many, you know what I'm saying? There ain't too many joints that I'm like, eh, type of shit. You know what I'm saying? Well, I, it's, it's, you know what I'm saying? Like, well, I uh, I interviewed Tere, who, yeah. who interviewed him, yeah. who interviewed Nas, and, and he told me something to the effect of, um, I asked Nas once, do you know what the biggest criticism of you out there is? And he said, yeah, it's the beat picking. I, I know this. So he knows, he knows this is out there. And he had a really interesting comment about that critique. He said, I don't want it to be too easy. I could pick the hottest beats. Everybody comes to them, comes to him with their hottest beats. Just like if you're in Hollywood, if you're Will Smith or George Clooney, you see the best scripts first. Nas and Jay-Z see the best, hear the best beats first. But he's like, if I just pick all the hottest beats, that would be too easy. I want it to be a little harder for me. So it's part of him adding to the challenge of being Nas and making Nas music. Right. No, and that, that's you what know, I was going to say. Like, that's yeah. where I was going with that. Is like, he wants to challenge I think himself. He, yeah, yeah, I think it's more like a challenge. Like, yo, this. And then, you, you know, what people can't always discount is his musical history with his father. You know what I'm saying? Like, and that's a mystic like key right there that they have, like Olu Dara and, and, and even Nas, like that's why like the one love, you really felt it because that's like that key, that other instrument. And so Nas has that and, um, you know, it's, it's a big part of the Queensbridge sound now. I think they, you know, he brought that to Queensbridge, that kind of like them, them heartfelt ill loops kind of shit because before it was just hip hop, eh, yeah, mm -hmm. type shit like that. You know, it was, you know, that type, yeah. Yeah, and, you know, Nas is a, uh newest album, the one with Kanye, mm. you know, on Simple Things, everyone pretty much says that he's responding to me. When, when, when he Could says, be. he says, never sold the, sold the record for the beat, it's my verses they purchase. Without production, I'm worthless, but I'm more than the surface. And I feel like since I've been the loudest voice on this, and I've done so many interviews, yeah. he didn't mention my name, but everyone pretty much was like, as yo, soon as it, it came out, everyone was like, yo, Nas right. is responding to you. Like, right, and when it all comes together and we get that album we want, you're going to get some credit on that. <laughs> <laughs> and you know, I'm nudging. <laughs> and like I said, man, people think I'm a Nas. Nas it's, it's, yeah. it's one, no, actually, man, this is the thing about Nas that's so crazy is that he has a few albums that are 
I heard some stuff, man, that he has with Timberland that's crazy. Mm. Like some ill stuff, man. So I don't, you know, the strategies, you, you see the different strategies. I don't, you know, but he got some stuff that's crazy in the cut that even preceded the Kanye shit. And I'm like, all right, well, why are y'all doing that? And then you, after a while, you can't, you know, question their strategy yeah. or whatever.